Hi and welcome again to another zipline gear shopping guide video. Today I will talk about the brakes, how to choose the appropriate braking system. If your planned or existing zipline run exceeds a 4% riding slope, that is, if the cable drops more than 4 feet per 100, you will need to think about slowing down and stopping the rider at the end of the run. On a slow zipline, you can still zip across the whole run without worrying much about running into the ending tree. The gravity will do most of the work, and the stop block can be set up as a backup. The stop block should be put about 5 or 6 feet before the end anchor, so the rider's movement is arrested, and if the rider happens to go a little faster, the stop may be not as gentle, but there will be no contact with the ending tree. Make sure you always do a test run with a test weight before riding, since things sometimes can go not as anticipated in theory. If you are planning on having a 5% riding slope or more, the stop block alone will be too rough to use as primary braking system, so we recommend adding either the bungee brake or the manual brake. The bungee brake is probably the most child-friendly brake there is. It requires no action from the rider. It is smooth and adds a little extra thrill on the run when slinging you back to the low point position. It even resets itself and is ready to slow down and stop the next rider. If your run is under 200 feet and within the 5% to a 6% riding slope, you can go with a 20-foot bungee brake kit. If your zipline is longer, go with a 30-foot kit. If you plan on exceeding a 6% riding slope to 7 or 8, we recommend the double bungee brake to double the stopping power. This braking system does require a third anchor, so please review the instruction manual or call us with any questions. Sometimes it is necessary for the rider to land on a platform. In this situation, nothing beats the manual brake. The trolley is installed in the brake unit, making it one big trolley that brakes when you pull down with your hand. Keeping your hand on the brake also keeps you from spinning around, so you can judge the distance and apply the brake when needed. The brake pad is applied and the friction slows down the rider, so the rider can control when and how much to slow down or stop. In some cases, we recommend using a stop block at the end of the run as a secondary backup. This brake is also quickly detachable, as are the trolleys that will be compatible with it, so the rider can land safely on the platform and quickly dismount from the cable without any assistance. Check out our website to look at all of these braking options that we offer and call us for any questions. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.